If you'll all please uh, rise. Tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Matt McCollum of Trinity Presbyterian Church. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Great God, guardian of our lives, it is you who remains faithful when all else falls away. Your promise of deliverance sustains us. We trust not in ourselves, but in your goodness alone to meet our daily needs. You have been the shelter of your people in the past. We watch for signs of your presence among us still as we seek to overcome the difficulties that confront us. Grant us a vision of your will to lead us to an unknown future. Bless our leaders here locally, God, our mayor and city council with your wisdom and discernment. Bless this land of ours, O oh Lord. Keep watch over it and protect it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Matt. First item on tonight's agenda is to approve the minutes of the regular city council meeting, the work session, and the agenda meetings which were held on February the 13th. Council, do you have any changes, additions, deletions to these minutes? Hearing none, if somebody will make a motion to approve these minutes. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve these minutes. Any final discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, uh, let me back up again. Uh, and we need to add an item to the agenda. Can I get a motion to amend the agenda to uh, add as an item the item 13, just call it the uh, four-party agreement, uh, asking the mayor to execute a four-party agreement. Can I get a motion to amend the agenda to add that resolution? I make a, a motion to add the four-party agreement as item number 14 on the agenda. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second to amend the agenda. Any final discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of amending the agenda to add item 13, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, the agenda is amended. Thank you. Mayor Wilson, your report, please. Thank you. Uh, this one? Yeah. Uh, okay. oh, there we go. Um, I uh, just wanted to give a quick update. Um, I met with um, the city's bond council and some things that we need to talk about um, before uh, this loan goes through at the airport. Of course, there's other issues too. It's, it's still a long way off of, of to being processed, um, but the debt limit needs to be looked at. As a city, we can uh, borrow interest-free uh, bonds to up to $10 million a year. And we have great infrastructure needs right now. Um, and just, of course, the golf course, um, clubhouse, and, and many others. And um, if we borrow with the over $7 million plus closing, it's only going to leave us about $2.4 million for 2017 borrowing power in that regard. Um, the other thing to take into consideration is that if the bond was, um, you know, not interest, I mean, or, or had the interest, the city can come in with the airport and put in some other money-making things that we can lower the debt quicker. So in addition to the $320,000, we can also have um, ways that the city can put things in that would bring money to pay more than 320. You can't do that without um, a no interest bond. But the most important thing is, is if we're going to use up to $10 million, it needs to be for the city. So um, there's a lot more detail to this, and I'll, I'll give you all the memo, but I just had the call this morning. Um, we did the moratorium. Um, I've, I've stated, and I just want to make sure if there's you know, a lot of stuff happened before I took office in November, but I do want to be involved um, with all contracts, leases, anything that happens from the beginning because it's, I'm not going to be looking at these and making the decisions. I'm going to bring people in that are experts in those field, in that field. Uh, the AT&T contract, unfortunately, we did leave a lot of money on the table. 
and we didn't want to prolong that um, contract because it had gone back and forth, back and forth before I even got it, which was just a couple of days before the agenda. Um, so I did sign it, but there was a lot more money to be made. And it's, it's just very important that, you know, I have that opportunity very early on. Um, I wanted to remind um, everybody that my I have a town hall meeting March 7th, Tuesday, 6 p.m. at the Nick Center. It will be live stream and will be up on the um, website the next day. And I will get with Jack and Lisa and you all schedule to go over either a special meeting uh, to go over the budget review or if it can be incorporated in the next city council meeting. When is the next city council meeting? March, March the 9th. 9th. March 9th, okay. So just, you know, whichever. And we might want to do it in a couple, like you said. So thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mayor Wilson. Next item is public participation. If you would like to come forward and address the council on items 5 through 13, come please come forward and please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, Council uh, and Mayor. My name is Gary Gover. I live at 300 Lincoln Street in Fairhope. Uh, I'd like to speak just briefly about uh, agenda item number 11, the resource officer for the schools. Um, when I became aware of this uh, matter uh, and, in, and the interest in it, I had some in-depth and lengthy discussions with my granddaughter. Uh, She's my ward, and she attends the middle school. Uh, so I asked her about uh, the matters uh, that, that might present risks uh, for safety and security and so on uh, at the middle school. And uh, she kind of persuaded me that it was still a land of innocence. However, over at the high school, uh, there may be some stuff cooking over there. Um, <laughs> The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, m my further thoughts on it are that uh, we ought to have identified some of the specific kinds of concerns that the resource officer would be uh, assigned to deal with. And that there ought to be some kind of uh, way of assessing the success or the effectiveness of this program uh, so that after we do this for a while, we can, we can see if we're hitting the mark uh, and accomplishing what needs to be accomplished over there. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Govan. Anyone else? Items 5 through 13. Okay. I'll close public participation and move to council comments. Councilman Robinson? I, I just got a... a Simple question. Does my chair look lower than everybody else's for some reason? I mean, I feel like I'm sitting at the kids' table. Will somebody remind me before the next meeting to switch my chair for Jimmy's? So, um, <laughs> uh, anyway, but no, I want to, uh, KOER put a, a great Fairhope uh, Mardi Gras parade on last Friday. Uh, we got another, or last Saturday, we got another good one coming up uh, tomorrow with the uh, Maids of Jubilee. And then again on Monday with the uh, Order of Mystic Magnolias. Um, also, I want to, uh, the do Chief Pettis spoke about the dog parade. Did anybody go to the dog parade on Saturday? It was unbelievable the amount of people that were down there. Um, I mean, it, I've been going to, to the dog parade a lot of years and taking my children, and it was, I, I don't know if it's the largest crowd we've ever had, but it definitely felt like it. Um, but it's just another good event that we put on. A lot of people attended. It was a great day. Uh, and I just, People look out for the parades tomorrow and Monday and hope they go smoothly. Thank you. Councilman Conyers. Um, I just want to say my family and I participated in the MMOR dog parade benefiting the Haven. We had a great time. You know, the weather was uh, supposed to be kind of rough that day and it blew through the night before. So I think that had a lot to do with the record crowd we had for the MMOR and a huge crowd for KOER that night. I uh, just want to remind everybody to have fun but be safe for the next two parades and uh, hope everyone has a good Mardi Gras. Thank you. Councilman Brown? Yeah, I want to thank the department heads for their uh, updates, what they're getting accomplished during the moratorium, and uh, just wish everybody a happy Mardi Gras. Councilman Boone? 
I'll be having my partner to my right. I'll have no comments. He, he needs to get. <laughs> I wanted to uh, just I don't have any comments. I want to address something that the mayor pointed out on the borrowing power of the city. Uh, if we uh, have seven and a half million or roughly seven point six million dollars issued in tax exempt bonds, it would reduce our bond borrowing power down to two point four million dollars for this year only. I'm not aware that we were looking to borrow money this year. So I don't know that that's an impact. And it also doesn't preclude you from borrowing from a bank uh, and, and a conventional loan. So I don't really know that it puts us in that much of a bind, but I look forward to seeing the budget and seeing what, what may have planned there. I mean, we do we do need to have those available to, to the city. I mean, if, if we ever have any needs. And secondly, the, and what I think is the most important thing is if we do a bond uh, that is, is uh, not tax exempt, the city can put things in place at the airport that can pay us and we can put that towards the loan. You cannot do that with a tax exempt loan. I think that the banks in town will, will loan us as much money as we want to borrow at a very favorable rate. We've, we've refunded several of our bond issues uh, recently when we were able to, when they matured to the point that we could with bank loans. And so not tax exempt bonds. So I think that I don't think that it really puts us in that much of a bind, but we'll wait to see what we, what we have in the budget. With that, I'll close council comments and move to item five, which is a final adoption of an ordinance to amend zoning ordinance number 1253, a request to rezone the property of Cliff, Pitt, Cliff Pittman from residential agriculture district to an R2 medium density single family residential district. This property is generally located at 19940 County Road 13, Fair Oak, Alabama. This was introduced at the February 13th, 2017 City Council meeting. Uh, I've been informed that Councilman Brown will uh, not be speaking to or voting on this uh, ordinance. Ordinance has been introduced. Um, Wayne, anything? No, sir. Thank you. Summed it up. 12.51 acres going from uh, RA, Residential Agriculture, to R2 Medium Density. Planning Commission recommended approval at their November meeting, and staff concurs with that. Okay. Questions for Wayne? Council? Okay. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for final adoption. So moved. Second. For a motion a second, uh, second for final adoption. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none, clerk, you call it the question? Council President? Aye. Place two? Aye. Place three? Aye. Place five? Aye. Okay. Ordinance is amended. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Council. Item number six is that the 15-foot utility easement currently existing on the lot line between lot 35 and lot 36 in Greystone subdivision. Silver Hill, Alabama, as referenced in attached exhibit A, be declared surplus with the understanding that those two lots have been joined into one lot by the owner of said property. The utility easements will still exist along the lot lines of the new lot created by the joining of lot 35 and 36, and that Mayor Karen Wilson is hereby authorized to execute a quit quit claim deed from the city of Fairhope to Frank Leatherwood and Jennifer Coleman Leatherwood for the aforementioned utility easement. And I get a motion for this to pass this resolution? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion? Dan, briefly. The utility easement, it, the utility easement is not needed that runs, but they're making two lots, they're taking two lots and making one out of them. The utility easement that runs between them is not needed. All of our utilities, the uh, Ferrell's utilities are out in the street, out at the edge, street, edge of the street. Um, he's wanting to put a house right in the middle of these two lots. So he's actually uh, changing the lot size by doing it. So we're of no use for it. And I also want to add that the utility easements do still run down the sides of this lot. Correct. Right? Correct. So, any questions for Dan? Okay, hearing no questions. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, resolution passes. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Council. Item number seven is a resolution that the City of Fairhope votes to purchase a lighting system for the Tennis Center for the Rec Department. The requested item is available for direct procurement through the National Joint Powers Alliance Buying Group contract. Therefore, it does not have to be let out for bid. The total cost is $129,900. This has been nationally bid through the NJPA's bid process. Dan, Ames, 
Y'all have any questions for Dan on this before I bring him up here? I think we're all pretty familiar with this. Can I entertain a motion to pass this resolution? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Final discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, resolution passes. Thank you, Council. Item number eight is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the adult league rules and code of conduct and the adult league fees for the Mike Ford Tennis Center for the Fairhope Municipal Tennis Courts as proposed by the Recreation Board. Sherry, can I get you to come explain this? Good evening. With the expansion of the tennis courts, we're able to host more leagues at the tennis center. And for us to do that, we wanted to establish some rules specifically for the leagues to also set some fees for people who may not be members of the tennis center, but who may be participating in one of the league matches. So this establishes those fees and establishes the rules for the leagues and ensures that Fairhope residents you know, will be able to be part of a team if they wish to do so. And it was passed through the rec board and um, Tomas was there to to speak to them, and it passed the rec board. Sherry says a league fee is fifty dollars per player per season for non-members. Correct. What is a season? <coughs> a season is um, usually six weeks. Six weeks. Uh, six. six to eight weeks. I, I don't play in a tennis league, obviously. <laughs> okay. Council members Brown and Robinson, are you in agreement with these? Yes. Yes. Any questions for Sherry? <clears throat> Hearing none, can I entertain a motion to pass this resolution? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt the league rules and code of conduct and the league fees. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. They're adopted. Thank you. Thank you. And also, thank you for the lights. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, item nine is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement of Neptune gas meter for the gas department for the fiscal year 2017 to be purchased as needed from Consolidated Pipe and Supply, a sole source provider in the state of Alabama for Neptune Technology Group Incorporated. The units must fit into our existing standardized system and are exempt from the formal bid pursuant to Code of Alabama, the estimated number of units is $466 at $75 per unit, at a not to exceed annual cost of $35,000. Can I entertain a motion to pass this resolution? So moved. Second. A little motion and a second to purchase these meters. Any final discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Okay. Item number 10, the site plan review at the request of Chris Haley on behalf of William Haas. For approval for a portico of 56 unit project located at the northeast corner of Fairhope Avenue and Brown Street. Thank you. This is a, as you said, a, a 56 unit project. 20, 33 of those are residential, 23 are commercial. Uh, it's located on 3.52 acres with a, the zoning of B2. Uh, this project went before the Planning Commission on February the 6th. Uh, they gained approval from the Planning Commission. It meets all aspects of the zoning ordinance. However, I'd like to point out uh, there is an issue with the tree ordinance. Uh, as we looked at this, um, the tree ordinance requires a 20-foot buffer along Fairhope Avenue and a 10-foot buffer, I believe, along Brown Street. Uh, the application uh, site plan we have does not uh, meet that requirement. So there's a conflict there I'd like to point out. Okay. Questions for Wayne? <laughs> Yeah, I, I have one because I, I completely agree with your uh, recommendation number two as far as removing the parking along um, Farrell's, I mean, Farrell Avenue there. Uh, is that, go, is that, I mean, is that proved to be a problem for the developer or is there? Uh, Mr. Boone, I don't know. He, uh, the developer's here. He could probably speak to that. I know that was discussed at the Planning Commission as well. And uh, we did have some public comments about the parking and, and the issues related to that. Um, but I believe Mr. Haley is here. He could probably speak to that better than I could as far as any kind of problematic issues that causes the development. Okay. Uh, Council, any other questions for Wayne right now? So staff is asking the applicant to remove the on-street parking due to the public safety concerns. Is there on-street parking there currently? 
Uh, currently, I don't believe there is uh, there. Um, I think my main concern is uh, the tree ordinance, uh, which is a standalone ordinance. It's not in the zoning ordinance. It's a standalone ordinance, and that does require, again, the 20-foot buffer uh, on Ferrip Avenue and the 10-foot uh, landscape strip, I should call it, uh, on Brown Street. And, uh, and so to be compliant with that, I believe that would need to be addressed. Did we address the tree ordinance at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting? It was discussed at the zoning at the planning and zoning commission. Um, uh, and I thought we did. voted on it, but yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, they, they did they did discuss that. However, um, uh, we had one dissenting vote, I believe, on the planning commission, uh, and that was discussed from that uh, member. Does it need to be pointed out? I mean, the what council can approve, though, Tut, based on that ordinance. I mean. Do you, do you know, I mean, you, he, you had mentioned that that tree ordinance wasn't something that council could approve, or did well, you misunderstand? If the, if the planning commission has approved it, then I think that takes out that issue as an issue because the planning commission has approved it, so the planning commission came to some decision that they didn't see as, as a problem. But, uh, but technically speaking, tree ordinance, there is a non-compliance with the technical part of the tree ordinance. And apparently the planning commission, I wasn't at the meeting, but I understand the planning commission approved it. So. But they didn't approve it contingent upon complying with the tree ordinance? I think we had a waiver of that because basically the there's a 20-foot green space requirement mm -hmm. because of the tree ordinance. That's and correct. you could come in and put a 20-foot section of grass there and i think it was the general opinion and not everybody voted for it i know there was at least you mentioned one dissenting vote but i think the general opinion was that uh, the wide sidewalks with the trees planted would look better than if you just had a 20-foot swath of grass there and being new my concern was when i read the tree ordinance it has a standalone section that deals with compliance um, that compliance dealt with the municipal judge and so forth, and that's why it caught my attention when I looked at it um, after the planning commission meeting. I, I, that was one of the first days I was here at the planning commission meeting. Mm -hmm. After I went and looked at it, I did notice it's a standalone ordinance, and also there is a section in that ordinance that deals with noncompliance or, or appeals and so forth, which is which is what caught my eye. Uh, and uh, now I know it had been discussed at the planning commission that they could grant, grant waivers. I'm not an attorney. I don't know how if that's uh, that how that happens, but uh, but seeing that standalone provision that dealt with compliance, that's what caught my attention. Right, and I think if, if that uh, tree ordinance violation had not been waived by the planning commission, then the developer would have had to go to city court to deal with the uh, violation of the tree ordinance. But under the zoning. Uh, Regulations, as I read them, the Planning Commission has the authority to, to override that, and so does uh, Council. They both. Wayne, I have a question again about back to the uh, back to the parking. I, yes, sir. I mean, it says on street parking. Is that going to be? off the current road i mean it's not going to jut out into fairhope avenue and who's who's paying for that is the developer paying for that parking because we always have parking issues right. here i mean any time that if somebody's willing to build 20 20 something how many parking spots did i read on the, how, many, how many spots would be out there that would front the street but but to say they're on the street is not currently on the existing street. Right. Can anybody answer that? Mr. Bill, I'm not sure the exact number. I, I do know the parking would be located in the right of way of the, of the city. Um, and there was, at the meeting, there were some concerns about backing out and so forth expressed by neighboring property owners and also some of, some of the public there, I believe. I don't have the exact number. I'm looking at it right now. It looks like there's probably. By count, there's 29. Yeah, right. <clears throat> can can y'all answer that question? 29. Are they going to be cut in to, to, to your property? They're not going to. Extend into the existing street, right? Correct. There, right now, there's a curb there and a sidewalk, and a city right of way, which is where the sidewalk and curb is. So, the cars will be parked where the existing sidewalk is. So, the back of a vehicle 
would be within the boundaries of the back of curb now and the property. So no, it's not jutting out into the road. The council, my line of, of question is, is related to the fact that for the past few years, uh, prior to uh, several of you being on the council, there was a discussion of extending the central business district down Fairhope Avenue to, to the westernmost portion, actually, of this property line. And so it, it stands to reason that if you are in the CBD that you have on-street parking just like everybody else has on-street parking downtown. And, and I know that it, you would probably love to hear that. I'm not saying that to benefit you. I'm trying to, to keep it, it, it be in keeping with the, the rest of the CBD. Uh, and I think that anybody that has commercial property, many of you up here maybe, uh, Jimmy, you have a bank uh, downtown. Mayor, you have a business downtown. You definitely would want the parking in front of your business. Um, so I would think that you would want parking in front of your business. Sure. Oh, uh, Council, it's, it, it, it's your pleasure to... Um, I think what Dr. Thayer had mentioned in the Planning Commission was that, um, and I'm not sure who else spoke to it, but... Um, that is it, the parking on Fairhope, the, it, the traffic is going to be a lot faster than it is, and it really is already a liability the way it is in downtown as well. And I don't dispute that. You know, I mean, there's faster. So that, that's, um, they say, oh, it'll slow down traffic. It absolutely will when you back up and really stop the next car that's, you know, Well, it's true in. that, you know, our, our, our Dan Burden, when he came and did our traffic study, that's one of the things he said was that when you have diagonal parking, it's just a visual. It will slow you down. So I think as people approach that, it will slow traffic down. Uh, you know, whether it's a hazard or not, but that's one of the, Jennifer, can you? Oh, and Jennifer yeah. also. Do you remember this when Dan Burden talked about that? It's a visual. It makes the street look narrower, although it's not narrower, and it naturally slows people down. Have you looked into that? For the record, I, I was requested by staff to hire a traffic engineer at my expense to study that exact issue. Did you do that? I did that, uh, submitted the report to staff, it's 200 pages long, and the posted speed limit there is 25 miles an hour. And the stopping, <coughs> excuse me, site distance or stopping distance that was calculated by the engineer was well in excess of, of standards, I think 158%. He said it could even pass if the posted limit was 35 miles an hour. So, um, you know, I, I paid to hire an expert to, to address those safety concerns, and um, I think he adequately did that. Okay. I want to ask uh, for one more clarification. If we voted on this site plan as submitted, it would be the site plan as submitted, which would allow um, the green space requirement, basically the waiver that the, that the Planning Commission passed, and it would also allow the on-street parking, because that is part of the, the site plan as it is now, right? We don't have to amend the resolution to change anything. Is that right? That's the way I understand it. No, if you want to right. change something, you have to amend You don't have to amend it. That's if you want right. to change That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Right. Okay. Jack, one, one point of clarification on the, on the tree ordinance issue. Uh, council for the Planning Commission um, had conversations with the Planning Commission, I think, ahead of time about this issue, researched it, and made them word the motion such that the waiver was granted. It was a known issue going in. The Planning Commission handled it the right way, and it, it's on record. You can go back and look at the video of the meeting. They they crafted their motion to address it and grant me the waiver. They've got the authority in the, in the zoning regs to do that. And so I, I, I thought it was a non-issue until I met with planning staff last Thursday. I've had a conversation with the city attorney, and I, I think that's his opinion as well that they've, they've granted that waiver and um, that issue is no longer an issue. The only reason I brought it up is because Wayne did email you Tut and got an answer back. That's that, anyway, that, that was different than what you just said. I don't think Tut was aware at the time that Planning Commission had, had actually met on the subject and voted on the subject. I think that's right. I didn't know that uh, the Planning Commission had approved 
and that makes a difference in the way I look at it. Any further questions for Wayne or for the developer? Thank you. What's your pleasure, Councilman? I'm going to give it a go and see if we can uh, approve this uh, with the number two recommendation going through as far as removing that parking along Farrell Avenue. Say that again now. I would like to approve this project, except I would like to put in number two, which is the city has asked the applicant to remove the on-street parking due to public safety concerns along Farrell Avenue. I'd like to see that removed. I'd like to put this in the motion to have that removed. You make the motion to uh, approve the site plan contingent upon removing, um, well, it just states that, 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 that it's an issue. So are you, are you wanting to say you want to remove that? Yes. Parking? Okay. Council, I have a motion to approve with the removing on the own street parking. Do I have a second? I have no second. Would somebody else like to make a motion? I make a motion we approve it as uh, presented. We have a motion to approve as presented. Do we have a second on that? Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Okay. Site plans approved. Thank you, Council. Item number 11 is a request to approve allocating a full-time police officer as a school resource officer using the two trained officers we needed to fill the position and to approve a new position of police officer for, for the police department with a pay grade of 21, beginning at $20 an hour and a post certified. Chief Pettis, you want to speak to this? Yes. Um, we do have a need for a school resource officer. Um, I know the question come up earlier. Um, we have things going on out there. We, we have two officers right now that's certified SROs. They've been to the classes and everything. Uh, one of the meetings I was at, I was asked what would be the pay for them. And um, I did not discuss, as I, I don't discuss pay or nothing like that, but one of the things that came to my attention was that we do not have an SRO in our compensation step. And so um, I would like to move forward with approving this to have an officer uh, hired. And then once we get that pay scale together, then uh, we can make a determination on uh, the SR person. We do have two. Uh, the problem is the two that we have they work for me full time and they do like they did today. We had an incident at the school and they got called out and they went out and took care of the business and came back. They usually check in in the morning time and then they get calls when they're on vacation or whatever. And so uh, it is things going on at the school, particularly the high school, and every once in a while we'll get a call from one of the other schools, which also can go out and take care of it. But it is a need. Most of the uh, schools around the county are going to SRO uh, officers, someone full time in the schools, uh, because that cuts down on response. If something was to happen, we wouldn't have to respond out to the school. We'd have someone out there, and they'd be calling us to respond to help out if it needed to help. Chief, I just want to add that you know, uh, school resource officer SRO is just a to me is just a a title that you give a police officer this this is really just is trying to accomplish adding one officer to the force so that you can allot the proper time for whomever it is that you have to place out there but that we have someone out there full time and I also want to address the fact I, I believe that your intent is to have someone at the they may be physically located or may have an office at the high school but it's my understanding that they will also uh, they will also be a resource to the middle school right. as well. To, to address the citizens' question earlier, it's my understanding we, we do have a lot of needs in the middle school. Could yeah, you we, 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 we have things that go on at the middle school and, and at different schools. We do. And that's why around the county, like I say, I think, I don't know if Daphne has two or three in their schools in each one, in the different schools, the high school and the middle school. Foley has, I think, four. Uh, 
resource officers. So, you know, it's not, we're not doing something just to give someone a job or to have someone in the school. It is things that go on. And then it's, it's one of those things that when you have a police presence or you have a presence there, things that when, if you go back to, um, I can't think of the name of the school, the last school we had to shoot at, but we were told in our briefing that uh, this kid that killed his mother and went up to the school, he went to the high school first. And he saw the police car there at the school, so he bypassed that school and went down to the school. That's not here, right? No, okay. no. Where, where, where the kids were. I want to clarify were. that. You said the last school shooting. I yeah, that, not I, I read up on a lot of them, so I'm, I'm sorry. I, Somewhere I in the United States. It. But basically, I think it was Sandy Hook. Uh, but basically, you know, it's just like if a bank robber is going to come to the bank, you know, he's got to take out the security guard before he robbed the bank. <laughs> and so it, it, it is a need. And I met with the principal, I done met with uh, Mr. Chris Mary, with the school board, met with you, I met with, the, I talked with the mayor about it, and we, I think everybody agrees that we need one, but I just want to make sure that um, we wasn't jumping through, putting the cart before the horse. And the news has got involved in it, and they've been calling around, I know, I think they called you, they called the mayor, they called me, they've been to the school, <laughs> and so we do need to get this uh, worked out and, and as we spoke today I mean the process is if we need this we have to put it into the comp study like we are doing any any jobs that we need that are new that comes first well, I just that's what I was saying I don't I don't know that just because we're calling a school resource officer I think you can hire this position under any existing police description and you just you put them like like Shane or Bunky and you know they're they're police officers, but right? They and have, they're just placed out there, so you can hire a police officer under an existing job description, and then work it however you have to work it to, to keep somebody out there full time. Right. Well, one of the things I was looking at it, when you say resource school resource officer, then it's a, it says using the two trained officers when needed to fill that position. So there again, what we're looking at is. And I was asked this from the two of them, do we send this one out there this week and this one out there next week, or do we send one out there in the morning and one in the afternoon? And so after looking at it, and, and you know, I, I would like to go move forward tonight to approve hiring someone and being able to hire an officer, and then we all sit down at the table and we work out there. We're, we're giving you 2,080 hours a year with a police officer. You put them out there in the school as you need them. All right. Full time. That's full time position. I, I, I just think that if we all came to the table in the beginning, because I had that resource officer in the budget, it does have to have a title because this person can do other things, but we also want to establish the correct pay. And uh, the chief agreed with me that if we're going to do that, then it's, it's just all part of the budget process and the comp study. Yeah. I mean, we can change those titles yeah. and add those titles in the, when we adopt the budget to create that position. But just just for now, so that it's the school resource officer has to be trained, has to have special training, isn't that right? Right. We we have two officers that's already, already trained. trained. The, the the problem the the, the problem I'm saying it, and the, the reason it dawned on me about the compensation study because you have the high end and low end, and uh, if we do like we usually do with the compensation that we check around and see what what people are making because you don't want to be paying you wouldn't want me to go be the resource officer at the school i just say it that way because right. yeah, <laughs> i'm not at the high end i would just kidding um, we need yeah. you at the dog parade chief <laughs> downtown all right council can i entertain a motion to approve this so motion? moved second I have a motion in two seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Item 12 is an application for a nonprofit tax exempt license or an alcoholic beverage license by Blair Bullen for the American Cancer Society for the blackout ball located at 161 North Section Street, Fairhope, Alabama on March 31st, 2017 from 6.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. Chief Pettis, any issues with this application? 
entertain a motion to approve this application. So moved. Second. second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of granting this application or granting this license, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, application is approved. Okay, uh, to item 13, which was the four-party agreement, which was added uh, at the beginning of the meeting. I'll read the first paragraph. It says, whereas the city of Fairhope shall enter into a four-party agreement, the MPO with FASTP funds with the state of Alabama acting by and through the Alabama Department of Transportation herein referred to as the state, Baldwin County, and the city of Daphne to cooperate in the widening and resurfacing of County Road 13 from State Road 104 to County Road 48 and the resurfacing of County Road 64 slash 13 roundabout to Ottawa Drive. So basically, uh, Council, this would um, enter in this agreement so that this road could be paved. It does not cost the city anything. It does turn over the maintenance of a portion of this road uh, to the city of Fairhope, which I believe we are already handling the maintenance. So just a uh, formality here. Entertain a motion to pass this resolution. So moved. A second, please. Second. Okay. Any final discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay. Resolution passes. Last item is public participation. If you have anything else to bring forth before the council, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Mayor Council, I just wanted to, uh, Eric Cortinas, I'm, I'm actually here speaking on behalf of the Booster Club. Um, our drawdown and silent auction is next Saturday, March 4th. And it's going to be here at the Civic Center. We're actually going to leave the tent set up. We're going to use the tent this year because this event has been growing. Um, let everybody know you. we would love to have you there. It's The tickets are $100 per couple. That is a meal. That's band, dancing, open bar and we have the silent auction and last year based on this event the way that we do it is seventy five dollars from every one hundred dollar ticket is given to the account of the sport or organization that sells the ticket and last year i had the pleasure of writing about a twenty four thousand dollar check split many different ways to all of those teams and all of those organizations so it's it's one of our it's, it's going to be our biggest fundraiser of the year and we would love to have you there and anyone else who would like to come Thank you, Eric. Anyone else? Sir. My name's Chuck Zunk, uh, 59 White Avenue. Um, this being February means March is right around the corner, and March is the biennial appointment cycle for new members to the airport authority. Uh, there are, I believe, three terms coming up, and I don't know if any of those will be reappointed or not, but there could be as many as three new members coming on to the airport authority. So what I'd like to do, uh, since I think we all have the same goal, which is to appoint the very best members that we can to that organization, uh, I'd like to share with you some of the experiences that I had over the last several years when I was the uh, chairman of the airport authority in the way of suggestions on how to make that process run smoothly uh, so that you do achieve the objective in the shortest amount of time possible. I have four suggestions. Since I'm not familiar with where you are in the process, if these are repetitive, please forgive me. I just don't know what you've started and what you haven't started yet. The first suggestion is this. Um, the people who are to be appointed to the authority, I would assume you would want people who have a fair amount of knowledge in either aviation, uh, airplanes, piloting, a business development, a whole series of things. And um, There's no one requirement because the idea is to have people of multiple qualifications on the airport authority so that uh, every background is represented. But at the same time, regardless of who you appoint, you want to make sure that they do have pretty good qualifications in whatever their area of expertise is. Uh, the best way to do that, in my opinion, is um, that the mayor, I'm sure, has in mind some people she'd like to nominate. 
What I'm hoping is that if she hasn't already, she would share those names with you promptly, along with their resumes, list of qualifications, whatever, so that you have the maximum amount of time to analyze those qualifications and decide in your own mind whether those people fit the bill to your judgment or not. Now, at the same time, that puts the obligation on the council to do just that. I don't believe you can take those applications that you receive from the mayor and just sit them on the shelf and wait to come to a meeting and decide whether to approve or not. I don't think you should make any preconceived judgments about whether you do or don't favor a person's nomination because you think they might be a friend of the mayor or they might be a friend of Jimmy Conyers or a friend of me. Those aren't qualifications. Qualifications have to do with what's on their resume. So I hope you will not only study them, but I would encourage you to do what we've done frequently in the past, which is for you uh, to call up some of those people and either talk to them over the phone or meet them for a cup of coffee and do what amounts to a job interview. These people are going to be with you for a long time. The terms are six years. So you have to be sure that you're very comfortable with this. The other thing I would advise is that this is not meant to be a one-legged race. By that I mean I don't think that all the burden of putting forward nominations is on the mayor because I would assume that between the five of you, you probably also have some people that you think might be qualified that are not on the mayor's list. And if you do, I would appreciate it if you would forward those to the mayor so that she can add those to the pile. Because in my view, the more that all of you, all six of you elected officials have to pick from, the better at the end of the day your choices are going to be. So I would urge you to cooperate, forward your own suggestions to the mayor, and let's try and get a pool of candidates that can achieve success in what is really a very big business and very important to the city in so many different ways. So that's my first suggestion. That was one? Huh? So that was one suggestion? That's it. You, you know, number one. I right. got, I'm going to allow you a little more time. All right. I appreciate it. Number two suggestion is this, that uh, I have heard, and I don't know if it's true or not, that there is some thought about nominating one or more employees of the city to the airport authority. Uh, that's certainly permissible under the law, but I would uh, want to suggest to you that that's bad policy, whether it's this mayor uh, a mayor we've had in the past or a mayor we might have in the future. Uh, I think that's bad policy and I have three real quick reasons why it is. First of all, that's not an arm's length situation. If you have someone, an employee who is answerable for their job to the mayor, I just really don't see how that can allow that individual to function independently on the airport authority because even if in their conscience they, conscience they believe that on particular issues in front of the authority they should be doing a certain thing over here, if they even believe, whether it's spoken or not, that the mayor might think otherwise, I have to tell you the pressure of an employer-employee relationship is such that you will never have an arm's length fair opinion rendered by that member. Number one. Number two is that I've had experience also on a few other committees where we've had some pretty good results here in the city. The Governmental Structure Committee, uh, for those of you who were alive back then when we did that, and more recently the Financial Analysis Committee, which I thought was a huge success. Even though all of the nominees for both of those committees were, in the sense, political appointments, nobody was answerable for their job to either the mayor or to the council. And we were able to combine those people into a team, albeit everybody had their own prejudice, but everybody spoke their own mind. And we were able to form a very good team. And you have to keep in mind that the airport authority is also a team. And you have to <clears throat> understand that if you want the benefits of teamwork, you have to have members on the team who are very transparent and who have very similar goals in mind. Thirdly, back to a point I made earlier about why this might be an issue if you appoint an employee is that by law, 
correct me if I'm wrong, Dunn, these terms for the airport authority are six years. And even though you as the council might try to say differently, well, let's appoint this person except only for as long as their employee or only for two years or only for all those, those things have no effect in law because the airport authority is a sovereign ent entity under law and you either put them on for six years or you don't. So if you think ahead a little bit, if you have an employee that you appoint, then I'm not sure I like the potential outcomes because, say, two years from now, uh, if this person is really good, three years from now they might be moving on. And so two or three years from now you'll be right back in the soup scratching around for another candidate, and that disrupts the continuity of the board. I think it hurts teamwork. And that's the best case. I think the worst case is if there's a falling out between the mayor and the employee, the worst case is you'll have a disgruntled employee on the airport authority, and that can't be good for business. So I think it's just bad policy. I hope you avoid it. Thirdly, on a more mundane, really quick point, it's boring, but it's important. The law is on appointments to the airport authority that for serving members, so a member X who's already on the airport authority whose term is expiring, the way the law reads, <clears throat> if the council and the mayor don't come to an agreement, an appointment and a confirmation on a replacement for person X, then person X legally continues to serve until such an appointment is made or until such a time as that person resigns. Uh, and if you were only appointing, if there was only one vacancy and you were only appointing one replacement, the math is pretty simple. But given that you're doing three, the possibility exists you may approve two, not approve one, and then the question becomes, well, which one of those three members with the expiring terms, member X, Y, or Z, which ones are staying and which ones are leaving? And you can create some legal confusion without intending to. And the way to resolve that uh, is, I believe, to have three separate resolutions, one to confirm your new member A, one to confirm your new member B, and one to confirm your new member C. And in each one of those resolutions, you say something like this, that for the term now held by member X, expiring in March of 2017, we appoint new member A. And then you do it again for expiring term Y and new member B and Z and C, if you see my point. That way, if the first one is not confirmed but the second two are, it's very clear who of the current <coughs> members stays on to serve and who does not. That's my third suggestion. And the fourth one is this. I know there's a lot of tension right now, and I know there's a lot of hard feelings back and forth about some of the things going on in the airport authority. But I would hope that all of you, all six of you officials, would also keep in mind that the people who are going to be considered for these positions are volunteers. They want to serve, they want to give you their best efforts, and they want to feel like what they're doing is worthwhile, and that in so serving, they can retain their dignity and respect. And so I urge all of you to go through this process and show all of these candidates a large amount of deference and a large amount of respect. Good volunteers are hard to come by. And if you tidy, uh, if you make the process on tidy and you're not disrespectful to these people, not only do I think you'll have trouble filling these vacancies with quality people, I think you'll have trouble along the way on every other committee. People aren't going to want to work for you if you don't treat them with respect and dignity. So those are my suggestions. I hope they help. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. I, I, I do want to speak to that since a lot of them were four. Um, but uh, these, I have interviewed seven or eight people. I'm forwarding all of y'all the resumes. The only reason I suggested Sherry Lee in the beginning is because in the Excel spreadsheet under these boards, and I discussed it with Lisa, it said vacancy, and that vacancy was for Gillespie. My understanding was that, like many of our boards with the city, that there was a city representative 
a city employee re representative. When you had mentioned to Sherry Lee that that's Gillespie wasn't a voting member, that was the end of that. So my appointment or my asking Sherry Lee to be a part was not an appointment. It was to replace whatever Gillespie was because it set a vacancy. Secondly, um, I have spent time interviewing uh, these people. They're, they're all pilots. Uh, one's a colonel. Um, one has, he's a pilot and his background is in economic development. I would love for you all to, to interview them. I mean, they're amazing people and um, that I, I agree. It is a volunteer position and I want the, the best possible people that we can have out there. And these appointments are coming uh, to term in March and I've talked to these people. Um, they have committed to doing this and I would love for y'all to meet them because they are exceptional people. Um, anyone else for public participation? Just out of curiosity, what is you the want to come, come forward, sir, if you'd like to speak. We know you, but we want to get it on record. Thank you. Know you're 456 Oak Avenue. What's the time limit, limit on public participation generally? It's uh, three minutes, and I granted him extra time. I mean, this is such an issue. It is at my discretion. In fact, public participation is a privilege, Mr. Moser. It's not a right. I'm just asking you. Okay. I will let him speak for 30 minutes if I so choose. I'm, I'm glad he did. I like Chuck a great deal, and he had a great deal to say. Right. And I appreciate your understanding the gravitas of the speaker and what he had to say also. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. So moved. Have a second? Say second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay.